make sure that just uh, do a test for me. John, say something. Bless. Yeah, okay, okay. Look like we good. Mm -hmm. All right, so we'll do the introduction now. Blessed love, honorable family. You're tuned in to the Five Points International. I'm your host, Honorable Prophet Corey Harris. We give thanks for life and the life giver, Holy Emmanuel I, King Selassie, yeah, I, yeah, ja. Ja. Rastafari. All right. We're blessed with the presence of the Honorable Priest Alonzo Mackel White coming to us from the Bahamas. And today, the topic we're delving further into the roots of Naya Bingi drumming and the links to African styles, indigenous styles such as Kumina and the like. So, without further ado, my Lord, the floor is yours. Blessed love. Blessed love, my Lord, blessed. Give thanks for our family, all listeners out there. Peace and love, Rastafari, bring the whole lot of love, you know? So on the topic, Naya Bingi, before going into drumming, you have to know where the ancient name come from and where the, the meaning of Naya Bingi comes from. Because a lot know that it's, it's drumming, it's the music. And then you have uh, a house of, Rasta that is called by Naya Bingi through their liberty, you know. But with Boho Shanti, we identify Naya Bingi with the music. But it go further beyond just the music, you know. Naya Bingi came from a warrior priestess, you know, the goddess Sekhmet. And she is both seen as a creative force and a destructive force. You see, it? that's where the, the word... Um, Naya Bingi runs through the earth like a living man and a woman and death to the, death to the wicked and life to the righteous. So she, she could be creative to those that honor her and she could be destructive to those that oppose her, you know? Mm. And she left what we call um, Kama today, which was northern Ethiopia. She left there and she went into the forest of the Congos, you know, and where she was um, warring and fighting against injustice, you know, for a kingdom and for all the other kingdoms as she passed through the different um, regions and empires, she got up a, a elite of, of warrior queens, you know, and they were fighting against injustice in the country. And that's uh, where she, they gave her a name, Naya Bingi. And they used drums to, to, you know, boost up their adrenaline, you know, drums are used for war, the sound alarm for war, you know, so she came with the drum, so that's why they named her Naya Bingi, and that's where the meaning came from, from a warrior priestess, you know? Mm -hmm. And when we play the Naya Bingi drums, we invoke her spirit, we call upon her to aid us, you know, in, in any battles we're going through, maybe physically or spiritually, you know? So that's where the origin of the name Naya Bingi came from, from a warrior priestess. It's a feminine energy. Yes, I. Yes, I. It's important to point out for the balance, you know? True, 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 true. Mm -hmm. I remember also reading about this, this said queen. Um, mm -hmm. She had another name was Muhumusa. Muhumusa. Muhumusa, yeah. yes. That's the Ugandan, Ugandan name for her. I've, I've heard that you know, she had powers such as um, making people invincible to bullets. And people, after she passed on transition, they continued to venerate her spirit and invoke that spirit in their anti-colonial mm -hmm. struggles. True, true, true. Mm -hmm. true. And you still have um, I and I them brothers and sisters that, that know how to do these rituals where they can make their self bulletproof. You know, this this where they got the story Superman from, you know, who's bulletproof and eating the sun, you know, to, to absorb the vitamin D and the nutrients from the sun and stuff like that, you know. So they, they get everything from I and I and they just um whitewash it so we can glorify white heroes, you know. So, yeah. yeah they, 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 they're science. True, we got our own true. science we work on. True. <laughs> so, um, yeah, you know, um, really just freestyling, you know, I was also 
uh, we were discussing um, before the uh, recording began about the roots of um, Kumina, rather the roots of Nyabingi being coming out of the Kumina tradition partially. Um, I was speaking with Honorable Priest Tasseti, whose family is from St. Thomas, and um, he gave me some information, which subsequently I've done some reading on about Congolese indentured servants in St. Thomas in the 19th century. And um, actually, I think I have the book here. It's, uh, yeah, it's called Alas Congo, A okay. Social History of Indentured African Immigration into, into Jamaica, 1841 to 1865. Interesting, I have to get that. Yeah, and so, you know, and he, he um, also confirmed that yes, the people in St. Thomas hold on to their Congolese origin and that's where the, the Kumina comes from and the Pukumina as well, coming from out of that tradition as well, which is all part of that revival continuum. Yeah, um, link up together. Yes, and so he, and you also um, were discussing about now how King Emmanuel now, um, we see many similarities with our order, with Emmanuel order and what is done in the revival in Kumin and Pukumina and Tasseti, priest Tasseti tell me that King Emmanuel was also a priest or not a priest maybe, but um, an adherent, let's say, of oh. that tradition in his youth. Mm -hmm. oh. So, but I noticed, uh, I, I remember you had um, you speak on the, those similarities as well. So if there's something you can enlighten us on, all right, so before I go to the similarities, I'll go where it, it began, you know, where the, the Kumina began. It's, it's basically um, misunderstood science, you know, with, with um, what people call today voodoo or voodoo, right? So it came from Ethiopia. Mm -hmm. All of it came, if you, if you, well, a lot, because of the misconception and misunderstanding of Kumina, they demonize it, right? So, but if you, they have um, areas where guests could come and see the ritual, see the ceremony, like any other revival or church service you go to, right? So when you go there, they give you the origin of it. They let you know where the tradition came from, where the practice came from. And it's, they said it came from, Kemet. It came from Ethiopia out of the house of, of David, out of the Ethiopian house of Solomon, right? Because if it, even in the scriptures, you know, Solomon is known as a, 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 a priest that does magical powers. And he said he had, uh, well, in the Quran, they said he had a magic carpet, you know, in the Bible, in Kings, they said that he built one of his temples without building tools. You see it? So they show you that Solomon was a man of, of high science. You see it? Um, um, African spirituality, you know, at its highest. And they said that they reverence the snake, right? Uh, and the snake represents Da, what they said is David, and the lion. So if you go further back, because they say, you know, not say David is a mythological character. He is not real because they don't have no proof that he ever existed or whatever like that. But our ancestors' names were changed too many, you know, lifetimes, you know, European invasion and stuff like that. They changed the names from our African names to, you know, English names like David and John and Paul and these things, right? So David is really thought most the third. If you go into Totmos the third history, his lifestyle, all the wars with in Midadu and all these in the Bible, um, David and Totmos the third line up together. Mm -hmm. And if you see Totmos the third crown, he has a snake on top of his crown, right? And then if you see a pedamek, you'll see a snake with a triple crown with a lion. So that shows you that um, the snake represents rejuvenation, reincarnation, rebirth, 
you know, not like what they taught us in, in Christianity that the snake was bad, the snake was, you know, um, deceptive and all these things. The snake is an ancient principle. And I remember one time, Priest Debbie was telling me that in Ghana and different areas of West Africa, it's forbidden to kill snakes. Sure. You know, and they say if you, if you kill a snake, that's, that's like a bad omen. You know, misfortune and all type of, you know, unpleasant things reach you. That the snake was referred as sacred, you know, and then the lion is sacred too. The lion represents um, power, the lion represents authority, you know. And then the cat, you know, is in camera, they have the cat because the cat could see beyond the spiritual realm. That's mm -hmm. why a lot of the pharaohs used to have cats around. And even Sekhmet is depicted as a cat, as a, a feline. You mm. see, to show you the powers the lion represent, and then the lion represent Ra too, the sun. You see, when the sun shines, you see the mane and all that. Mm -hmm. So, to get from there, when they had the invasion from the Hexos and all that, when they invaded Kemet, our ancestors went down to the west coast where you see Mali, the Dugans. They mm -hmm. still have the ancient knowledge we'd be dealing with in Kemet with lining up the stars and lining up the pyramids with the constellations and mm -hmm. telling you the movements of them and everything. The Dugans are still there today. Club two, Hausa, all them. Yes, you know, and then you have the Ashanti. So all them will tell you they trace their their uh, tradition to Ethiopia, North Ethiopia, you That's know right. what I mean? So get that out the way that the ancient tradition of Kumana came from Ethiopia and mm. to the West. And from the West, true slavery came down here in these parts. But we came down here before slavery, of course, mm -hmm. you know, and, and we was practicing it here before slavery. But when they brought us here to slavery, different tribes and different traditions combined, combined it, like even in Haiti, a lot of the, the practices were emerged from different tribes and that they made they made the ceremony even more powerful mm. you see it because a lot coming with um different spiritual gifts to enhance the ceremony right mm -hmm. so now bookman right yes yes bookman came from he was born in Sydney, Gambia mm -hmm. in 1767 when he, when he, and then he was talking to Jamaica as a slave, working in the plantations and everything. And he got his name Bookman because he loved to read books, right? He loved to read books and he loved to read the Quran and everything. And the other slaves couldn't read it. So he used to read books, teaching them um, a lot of things through the books. So they call him Bookman. So he, and then he, 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 he taught them the ceremonies the Kumana ceremonies, you know, how to uh, summon the ancestral spirits through nature and everything and all that to connect with every, with all life, you know. And they saw that and they they was afraid of that. So they sent him to Haiti. The French bought him and he went to Haiti, you see. So when he went to Haiti now, he linked up with a mambu, a, a priestess called Cecile Fatima. Mm -hmm. And they came together now and did a ritual, did a ceremony we call Wa Kanima. Mm -hmm. That's a, a, cere a famous ceremony they did with, with, with rose a lot of ancient gods and ancestors to aid them in the fight. You know, they call them Tustahusis, like basically clones. They say they was rising from underneath the ground. They was coming, flying from the air. Mm -hmm. They was on a different level. But he ended up getting killed, right? He ended up cutting his head off and everything. And Cecile Satima finished the rituals, finished the ceremonies. And it was a famous prayer, the Bookman prayer. And this prayer is still is being said in the voodoo ceremonies in Haiti. If you go there, they'll recite this prayer. It's almost like how when we say the Cree. So it's almost like a Cree for their ceremony. And they always say it, you know, yeah. and yeah. the prayer goes, the God who created the earth, who created the sun that gives us life, the God who holds up the ocean, who makes the thunder roar, our God who has our ears to hear, you who are hidden in the clouds, who watch us from where you are, you see all that the white has made us suffer, 
the wise the white man's God asks him to commit crimes, but the God within us wants to do good. Our God, who is so good, so just, orders us to avenge our wrongs. It is our good God who will direct our aim and bring us victory. It is our God. It is our good God who will assist us. We all should throw away the image of the white man's God who is so pitiless. Listen to the voice for liberty that sings in our hearts. That's the book of Israel. Right? So that's why King Manuel Charles Edwards was the divine order is connected with him because he already he already laid the foundation in Jamaica mm -hmm. of the Kumana ceremonies, right? Mm -hmm. So it's it it's it been passed down, you know. So if you notice first, the tabernacle, they they always have a flag bearer yeah. calling the drapo. That's the they call it the drapo, <laughs> right? Yeah, the drapo. So these flags now have different emblems on them, and they say it 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 signified the constellations and astrology and stuff. So you'll see some of the flags that have stars on them. Yes, sir. Right? Yeah, representing you know um the black man being a star, being a part of the cosmos, being one with nature, you know, like mm -hmm. um, the microcosm of the macrocosm, you know. And then you have the altar. You have the altar, what it's called, I think the, it's called P. That's what the altar is called in, in mm -hmm. the Creole language. Yeah, P. And then you have the priest, and then you have where the, the God calls royal reverence, just like how in Boashanti, the, the royal God says, royal reverence in the mighty cause of King David. Mm -hmm. But only thing now in the Kumana service, they said, they say, um, Legba or Bonje, Legba, Ube Potla, Punu Kapase. Meaning, open the door. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's true. So, you know, so it's just that's just, almost just like the royal reverence, the God um, opening up the portal so the yeah, priest can go through with the ceremony, you know? <laughs> yeah. And then you have you have three drums. They have three drums, three classical battery drums. Um, mm -hmm. one is called the Congo, one is called the radar, and one is called the petrol hmm. in this in the in the Kumana service. And the, they represent the chromosphere, the photosphere, and the atmosphere. They represent the elements above. They represent the the heavenly body. Mm -hmm. That's why you see with even in King Monroe's service, he starts with three drums also. Mm -hmm. And three of those drums controls the elements of nature. You have the kete that controls the lightning. You have the bass that controls the thunder. All of these are heavenly elements. In the on the chromosphere and ionosphere and the photosphere, you know. So they they this this was some high tech science. This wasn't just just a religious practice. This this is this is the only way they could have defeat the the European armies. They had to tap into the ancestral realm. They they wasn't playing. There wasn't no religion. They was, you know, I like I said to somebody the other day. Religion it teaches it teaches you to talk about God, you know, and it teaches you to speak to God. But the African spirituality teaches you to become God. So it gives us our power. We ain't asking no one to aid us and help us like how you see the other religions doing, you know, praising or begging. You know, we was taught to uh, become that God and goddess. You know, Jah gave us the knowledge to possess his power. You know, that's why when we are being called God and goddess, we can't take that lightly. God and goddess means you have powers of a god and a goddess. You have the potential to um, to command the plants, command animals, command nature. Yes. You know, true, you know. Manifest. It's true, manifest. But it's a it's an order how you do it. Uh, the, the the universal mother requires sacrifice. So for to give you that power, she ain't just give you that power, and you ain't given the sacrifice back. And the sacrifice is yourself, your blood. You know, 
know, um, doing the ritual. You know what I mean? And then you have you have the the, the uh, conch shell, the we call it the lumbi, right? You have the conch shell. They blow the conch shell certain hours of the day. You know, the call, the summon, the ancestors through certain hours. Same thing as Boa Shanti. And the conch shell carry a significant power too because the sound it makes emits a vibration that evil can't stand. Even in even in the Hindu religion, it, they said that Vishnu came blowing a conch shell and say that's how he created um, life. That's how all the planets and everything that existed. That's their creational story. That Vishnu blowed creation through the conch shell because it makes this om sound. This om sound carries a high frequency vibration behind it. You see it. So everything, sound is vibration. That's why in the first they said it was the word. And the word was God. Because word, sound, is power. Mm-hmm. You see it? Certain words you say, certain sound emit some serious vibration. You know? Mm-hmm. So, and then you have the, the, the congregation. And then you have the empress them. And then they carry, they praise two deities. They praise Legba and they praise Ezili. That's the father and mother of creation. They praise the father and the mother, mm-hmm. Papa Legba and Mama Izili. And Mama Izili is depicted as a ship on the water. They have, when you see over the altar mm-hmm. in the Kumana service, they have a ship. And if you go to the Shanti service, you'll see, y'all have ships, pictures of Black Star Liner. My you Lord. See it, you see it, it represents us come, coming down here to ships and returning to ships. Seven, nine, eleven, thirteen miles. Thirteen miles of Black Star Liner. Yeah, you know what I mean. And then they even have certain days where they wear white. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I'm not saying this off of something I read. I read, you know, I saw these for myself. Mm-hmm. You know, I just came from Haiti the other day. You know, mm-hmm. and Monday and Wednesday and Saturday they wear white, mm-hmm. so just like Bobo Shanti, mm-hmm. and. Um, I just was meditating why they wear white, you know, and I know in, in, in the Dr. Africa book, Dr. Africa is saying in Africa, they carry certain energy, you see it, they carry certain yes. energy, yeah, and then I went further and I say, all right, they carry certain energy, what type of energy these days carry, why it's different from the other days, right, so I just was passing through Genesis 1, and then when I went in, Genesis, I think seven, it says that the second day, you know, the first day is Sunday. So now the second day is Monday. So it said the second day, the firmament was created and divided the firmament, the water from above and the water below. So we know that the second day was uh, hev- heavenly works. It wasn't no physical works like him creating trees or whatever like that. So it was, it was dealing with something that you can't touch. It was a spiritual day of work. And then you have the fourth day, which is Wednesday, when he created the sun, the stars, the moon, and the planets. Mm-hmm. So that's another heavenly day where Jah wasn't getting dirty. That's why he wear white, because there was days that he didn't get dirty. Now, um, on Tuesday, he created, um, he created the, the, the sea, he created, the, the, you know, all the animals in the seas and the trees and the land, and then... Thursday, um, I think he created like all the insects and creatures, and then Friday he created man. You see, all that was like physical days, you know. So that made sense now when they said that these days, the Monday to Wednesday and the Saturday, you know, was um, considered as sacred, and then you have Saturday, which is the Sabbath, of course, where the mm-hmm. Father rests. Mm-hmm. You know, so it, it all adds up to you know to how our Father did a ceremonial. Or then, then, remember what I said first, that it came from the house of King David, mm-hmm. this way of practice. Mm-hmm. So, and, 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 and seeing that Dada rose this way under his father's name, Rastafari, you know, the bloodline of King David, mm. it makes I and I them have more power. Mm-hmm. You know, and more blessings, you know, and, and seeing his majesty coming in 1966 and even blessing 
this house, this ceremonial house, you know, with a gold medal to show that we won, we won the victory, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, the priest I said to he talk about, he talk about that as well, how when his majesty was crowned, due to the fact it was an African king, even those who were not, um, say, in the line of um, uh, Leonard Percival Howell and those openly proclaiming the divinity of his majesty, they were still um, chanting his name in the churches, in the ceremonies, and invoking that divinity same way. True, true, true. And then you have, um, you have Nathaniel Hubert, he was acknowledging the emperor as the Christ even before Leonard Howell. And uh, was that Archibald Dunkley as well? Archibald Dunkley, he was proclaiming of a black messiah, but he really didn't point specifically at the emperor. Mm. But Nathaniel Hubert, he points specifically at the emperor. Mm. You see it, and he created the Ethiopian Coptic Church in Jamaica before Howell, and then Howell created like the Naya Bingi version, the drums, mm -hmm. you know, and keeping Sabbath and stuff like that. And then these, they didn't have no locks. These Huber didn't have locks. True. And then I didn't have locks. So they more was, you know, coming into enlightenment of his majesty being the Christ, but the liberty at his fullness with the dreadlocks and the Moses image didn't come in until you know, King Manuel and um Boney G's we call um mm. call him now um Bongo Wato. Bongo Wato. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, that's where now the dreadlocks mm -hmm. start to come. Black in. youth faith. Yeah, the black youth faith. Mm -hmm. You see it and the, you know the Naya Bingi drum sound and you know and and, and but Bongo Wato um called his house Naya Bingi. Mm -hmm. You know. But Dada called his bandstand, his musicians, mm -hmm. Naya Bingi, you know. Daniel meaning number that, one. Meaning Daniel number one band, meaning that it's a spirit, it's a it's a power that you invoke and call up on to the drums. Mm -hmm. You know? I mean, you know, it, it it's a liberty at the same time too. So it's mm -hmm. both. You know? Yeah. So Boba Shanti is Naya Bingi <laughs> same way. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Lord. There's no difference, like how you know one's try to separate it. There's no difference, you know. No. The only difference is that um, <clears throat> um, one see his majesty different and see you know, mm -hmm. they see his majesty as one creator, not having someone next to him, you know. Mm -hmm. Like how we have Dada, Marcus, and you know, the last see that's that's the only difference. Mm -hmm. You know, and they don't wear turban or whatever. Right, but it's the same. You know. Mm -hmm. I was yeah. reading um about, and I recently also had a discussion with um Honorable Ross Flacco. I was reading um a publication of this anthropologist, I believe, a religious. He was studying re Caribbean religions in the 1950s, a, a white man, American named George Eaton Simpson. And he was in Kingston. Um, and he was, you know, I'm not sure exactly where in Kingston he was, but you know, he was he was in the in the slums. And um he, his observation was that at that time the Rastafari that he met were not playing drums, that they were playing like Roomba boxes and shakers. Nobody said they were not playing drums. His observation and another thing was that um, from what I've read and also uh, from what Flocka was telling us that through the downtrodden of society, all being the people who play in Kumina, who play in the Budu drums, who are praising Rastafari, they're all outcasts. So all these people, you know, in the strict um, economic society that it was, had to live in the same areas. So a lot of those influences had a chance to mingle and blend and people, you know, freely mm -hmm. mixed because they was in the same yards, you know. That's what I was saying first when I was remember I was showing that that another a lot of the different traditions of it um combined together. 
in mm-hmm. Haiti. Like, because you had some came from Benin. Mm-hmm. Majority of them came from Benin because Benin is famous for voodoo. You know, mm-hmm. they have voodoo festivals. That's like how in the Bahamas they have jungle festivals. You know, in, in Trinidad they have their fest. You know, but in in Benin they have a festival every year called the Voodoo Festival where they parade and they dress in costumes that signifies the heavenly body, the stars, like the Dugans, who they dress, they dress like Ceres, one dress like Jupiter, one dress like Venus, and they dance the the, orb, the orbiting of the constellations and the galaxies, they dance, and, you know, but now they do it now to, um, to entertain, you know, like, like, because even in Bahamas, we trace our heritage straight from Ghana, because we have a lot of um, traits of it, like even the outside cooking, the outside ovens and stuff came from the shanty and stuff like that. And then the John Canoe we brought with us too. And the John Canoe is a chief from Ghana. It's called John Canoe. That's where the name John Canoe came from, right? So it was a, that's another, you know, practice of Kumana, but been watered down. You see, it had been watered down because in the earlier days when I was growing up, <coughs> They would have costumes and looking like the sun and looking like different planets and stuff. And, you know, and the queens them dress like angels, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And they will dance and stuff. But the dance is now, like I said, to entertain. But before we was dancing movements of stars, reverencing them, giving honor to them, just like how the Dugans still do. That's how it's so below. Below, yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? So, um, we're amazing people. And this this mystery, this African mystery system, we have to get back to it because that'll be our true power. Religion is, is really killing us and dumbing us down. You know, and King Emmanuel brought this power to us. We just, you know, a lot of I and I them as Bobo just need to come out the Christian contact of it. Like, you know, like following the Christian ways of, of it. And mm-hmm. get back to the ancient African spiritual way of how Dada teach I and Adam. The only difference than the other Kumana services is Jah used the Bible. That's all. Mm-hmm. But the practices, even the shakers, the shakers are the main tool to even summon the energy of Jah because the shakers represent a snake, right? Mm-hmm. If, you, if you shake the shaker, it sounds like a rattlesnake. Mm-hmm. It sounds like a rattlesnake, yes. And they call it the Asan. In Creole, they call it the Asan. And they, that's the main element they use in the Kumana services because that's how you summon. That's, that's how you call them. Hey, I'm, we're here. We're ready. Mm-hmm. We're ready to go through with this, this sacrifice. Mm-hmm. And they come to the sound because it, it has like a raindrop sound. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So... Um, even the South Americans, you know, the Indians, them, they call it the rattle. Yeah, they, they call it the rattle. They use it in their fire ceremonies also. Mm-hmm. And the rattle came from the rattlesnake, the name rattle, you know. Mm-hmm. So that's another very important instrument. And um, even in the Ethiopian Orthodox Church, they have golden ones. But they shake, if you mm-hmm. notice it. They shake it very slow and they're golden. You see it? Mm. Yeah. It almost like a scepter. It's a it's a magic wand. Mm. You see, it's a magic wand. That's how you summon and you hold the power and then you could use it as your command. Almost just like how you see Harry Potter mm. and stuff. That's the same instrument. You know, mm. everything they portray with dealing with magic and stuff came from us. Mm-hmm. You know, it came from us, but they just demonize it and stuff like that, you know? Mm-hmm. And then the, the, the kumana and the sorcery or witchcraft is two different practices. A lot of people don't understand that either. You see, because you have you have you have one that deals with herbal remedies, dealing with herbs and stuff like that, and you have one that deals with blood sacrifice. Mm-hmm. You see it? Even if you go into Leviticus, you'll see Moses, because they used to call Moses a voodoo man, the obey man. You know, they, they, they call the Christ that too because of the miracles he was doing. Mm-hmm. Even even most Christians, they always brag about the miracles Christ do, but they know if they see the man doing that in reality, they'll call him an Obeah man, the things he was doing. 
turning water into wine, walking on water, you know, uh, raising the dead and all these things. They know if they see this in person, they'd be like, that's an old bear, man. They wouldn't say, oh, that's the Christ. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Just to be realistic because we know how people think today. You know what I mean? Yeah. So they they even, you know, not for the LSM <coughs> today to call Dada Obeah man because of the rituals they see him dealing with. Even today, some you know, some Haitians, if they see the Bo Shanti service, the first thing they say, you know, that's that's a Boko service and them thing there, you know. So they understand that, you know, Ja is an ancient science man, the first scientist. Mm-hmm. You see it? Yeah. So <clears throat> with the blood sacrifice now what Moses was doing in the church in the tabernacle where he was shedding like lamb's blood mm-hmm. and ram's blood for the torment of sin. Mm-hmm. They they still do that in certain Kumana services. Yeah. They yeah, they still do that. So that could tell you the, the practice came mm-hmm. from even from them diamond. Mm-hmm. Uh, obviously they ain't saying it in the Bible because the, the word they was using is not the term we use it today. Mm-hmm. The words we call it voodoo or human or whatever like that. Mm-hmm. But back then they call it the you know Nazarite vow or you know, mm-hmm. and that's what they was dealing with. Mm-hmm. You know, and they was dealing with the menstrual cycle too. They if you read in Leviticus 15, 16 and 15 and 17, it shows you the process they go through with the queens them on their journey. Mm-hmm. What they, they do with the blood and how, you know, they don't use no utensils, no spoons, nothing she eat from, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? And they sure it's a time for her to be separated from the man and everything. So they ain't nothing new with Dada come bring with the 21 day. No. It's not, not new. It's just something that was practiced from, from ancient times where we forgot. Mm-hmm. And he just came and bring it to remembrance. So it, it, it's not nothing like he just make up out of the blue and be like, I can do my own thing. He, he just came to bring the practice to remembrance. Yes, sir. You know? mm-hmm. Yeah, because we forgot our power. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. I was reading, I know many, many have read the book, um, The Black Christ Unveiled True. by uh, Ione Matthews. I have a copy right here. Um, and, and she great, uh, great talks book. a lot about. Um, revivalism and um, the links between King Emmanuel Charles Edwards and revivalism and the, the similarities. <clears throat> um, and then I was reading this book, really excellent book just the other day uh, by sister Maria A. Robinson Smith, Revivalism. And okay. It doesn't mention, interesting, they don't really mention um, the Congress at all, but it's so in depth in revivalism. It's obvious. So many of the um, so I mean, it mentions it mentioned Rastafari. No, she mentions a little bit. Just she okay, mentions yeah. uh, a sister who's married to a Rasta man, not a not a Bobo. Okay. And um, in saying that the colors that she's wearing um are also worn by uh by Farai um, I go to the flags. I have a picture in here. And they wear ice gold and green turbans. There's that's there right there. All right, yes, yes, yes. A lot of turbans and a lot of flags and uses of colors. And you know, like for example, I was reading about uh, a peace kumina, mm-hmm. and they say they use blue and white, you know. And so I was always wondering about that United Nations flag now, you know. And I know it's for collective security, but when I made the connection between the Kumina, it it just seemed obvious to me that it's like an invocation of that same energy using that same color mm. in a different context. Yeah, yeah, different yeah, context. yeah, 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 yeah. You know, and the blue and white represent the heavens. It represent the clouds and the sky, right? And it, and it represent the heavenly body is saying protect, like the God is new, protecting or shielding the globe. So that's why United Nations now use that as, all right, a collective security to shield or to protect other nations that are being oppressed by stronger nations. So it carry that same type of energy, you know, that covering, it, it represents cover, mm-hmm. attack. Because mm-hmm. the, 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 the sky's blue, it covers the planet. 
the clouds covers the planet. So, and going further on this 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 connection, I've seen pictures of of Dada where he's in all white and he's sitting next to a basin, just a basin of water, on a table, and there's like a sprig of of, of a branch of greenery next to it, you know. And it's also something that they talk a lot about in this book about the prevalence of the use of these basins as holy sites, as, you know, as zones, mm. uh, sacred zones. Mm. Well, I know <clears throat> uh, Priest Abby and Empress Lily used to tell me that he used to have a little basin next, like next to him, like a little, like a bowl mm -hmm. with a cover where he would spit inside it. Okay. Because he, ne he never spit on the ground. Mm. You see? Yeah, he don't spit on the ground because it's like spitting on Mother Earth. So you see the, the respect he has for Mother Earth. He understood that, all right, this planet is alive and trees and plants are sentient beings. They have feelings. Mm. And it is a, they used to say, too, that in the night, I used to tell them, don't pick plants or pick herbs to go boil for tea in the night. Mm. Why? Because the plants have life. We read a book called The Secret Life of Plants. It tells you, it shows you how they have feelings. And once you build a bond and a connection with your plants in your yard, your gardens in your yard, the arc field is cover you wherever you go. They protect you with their arc field. So if you have an arc field already, they will strengthen it with their arc field. So you will be protected when you go out there. So when people say, oh, God got me and I protect or whatever. That God is Mother Nature. That God is, is, is all life with around us that aids us. You know, we, we, we try to just put it on one, like it's just one being. It's just one man or one woman. That's it. Jazz everything. When you see the, the Jazz say, even in Dada um, speeches, you heard him when he said, oh, even, even the water you drink, God is in it. Even the food you eat, God is in it. You know, you say he in everything. You know, he ain't only in the flesh. He could come out this flesh and go in a bird. He could go in, you know, he could go in the fish. Mm -hmm. I, I even when I went to Philadelphia to the service in Philadelphia with um priest RL and all the priests Wade, I was there. And we was reasoning, you know, and they were saying that how um when you go into the sea. Ja taught us to pray before you go in the sea and pay the sea because the sea has a sea king and a sea queen. Mm -hmm. In the Kumana, they teach us that too, of the sea king and the sea queen. Mama Wata, you know what I mean? Yeah, so they say they pay five cents, five, five cents, and then they go in the sea. So they ask permission before they go in the, in the waters because the waters are a different world. When you go in the waters, like you going up in space because space is a body of water. You can't breathe there and then the water on the earth, you can't breathe under there. So there's a whole different world there. That's 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 um you're, you're trespassing basically. Yeah. It's like going to another border if you're going into Africa or going in the states, driving to different states, you have to pay to go cross uh what they call it now? Um toll. The toll, yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know? Yeah. So it's like a toll, you gotta pay your toll before you go in, you know? Yeah. So um and then they were saying that um, three o'clock in the morning, Jada up praying before roll call, yeah. right? So they ain't like, mom, what this man praying for? I say, when you was a god and when you know you're the creator, you know how much prayers you're answering. You know how much, you know what I mean? It almost like that's the same story where they get the Santa Claus story from, where oh they ask him Santa for gifts, and he mentally. Or heard all their prayers and what they wanted and he was with the reindeer carrying these gifts to different houses to the children who was asking him for certain gifts. Mm -hmm. That's the same thing they got that from from Ja. Mm -hmm. You know, Ja answering prayers. You know? And then it was saying say, um, one time Ja well most of the time they say Ja used to go on journey, say he'll be sitting on his throne and he'd just be gone. You know, he just either tapping his leg or they calling him and he going and then the priest them who watch them they say well y'all on a journey he come forward and he stay on journeys right so um priest Arab was telling me that when y'all came out of the journey like 
two hours. They were sitting around him. He was on a journey. When he came out the journey, he told them he went into the water and never got wet. So that shows you that the father was dealing with astral projection on a regular level. He was doing out-of-body experiences. Mm. You know? Yeah, he said he went into the water and didn't get wet. So mm. most likely, he was doing some Aquaman stuff. <laughs> you know? Visiting his creation in the sea. Mm-hmm. You know? So these the powers would be possessed as gods. He ja come bring an ancient way of life how he was living with I feel like Ja come ahead of his time because a lot still ain't ready. That mm-hmm. van science he to bring to us. People look at it as backwards or ancient or old, but it's really advanced mm-hmm. because we have lost a lot of our power through religion. Yeah. See what I saying? Yeah, because you can imagine you could tap into some type of powers and stuff like that. That's 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 high technology. That's high tech technology, even with like the pyramids, they still found them and how we created it, how they got made. Like they, they had um an architect or a contractor from China. He must be built one of the strongest jackhammers. And he used the jackhammer because it's a obelisk in Luxor who was getting caught out the rock, but they didn't finish it apparently. Right. So they yeah, so they got some of the um, the most advanced jackhammers all over the world to come and see if they could maybe try to chisel it out or, you know, jackhammer it, to chisel it out. And they said it was like hitting metal. They couldn't even pinch the rocks, you know? So what they use? You yeah. understand? So, they have so, a whole lot of machine so, artifacts and yeah. <laughs> they don't know how they made them, you know? it's yeah. But, um, what made sense is um, I listened to uh, uh, um, I can't see Mufudushi. the face, my lord. All right, yeah. five night. Yeah, Mufudushi, He, I I feel his <clears throat> analysis too. They only could have been using. They only could have been banning gravity. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? They did certain rituals using drums and certain chants, and they banned gravity, meaning. They changed the whole gravity field in their area or their environment where they made everything weightless. Mm-hmm. You see, the rocks could have float. Mm-hmm. To even put them blocks in the formation with the pyramids and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because on wor- words is power. Words have sound vibration. You see, mm-hmm. I saying you remember when we was growing up, they say, "Oh, um, sticks and bo- sticks can sticks and stones can uh, um, break my bones, but words can't hurt me." That's a lie. Words could hurt. Mm-hmm. If someone say, so, especially someone you love, says something hurtful to you, you could feel that. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you could feel it. So I can tell you, words have an effect in our environment, our, in our physical realm. Mm-hmm. You know? Mm-hmm. It's a lot to process and think about, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah so back on um, the Kumina now, one thing I have noticed and I'm sure you have um, <coughs> many of I and I when we want to talk about Kumina and those sort of things there's a, a real resistance to it. In fact, many people will burn it out and um, oh. and I know um, that you have Haitian heritage and you are well connected with that heritage as well so I wonder what is your observation, your personal observation on this dynamic, you know, with I and I? Well, you know, the first thing they say Haiti is in the condition is in economically, politically, is because oh, they believe in too much witchcraft and oh yeah, that's why they they suffer and you see the Lord send the, the earthquake there. You see, they get a lot of food. You see, they drowning out of the sea, trying to get to the Bahamas, trying to get to, to America. Or they getting killed through Mexico, trying to go to South America to get here. You know, because that's what they've been given mm-hmm. from the media. That's what they've been given by the puppets mm-hmm. for America. You see it because they don't understand the history of Haiti. You understand? Mm-hmm. Um, because if you go into even like, I went up to Santa Delta where Christoph built, King Christoph built, right? Uh-huh, I the saw fortress. the photos, yes, sir. Yeah. 
I've been up to there, my lord. It has to be one of the seven or eight wonders of the world. Like mm -hmm. going there is like three different three different terminals to get there. We took a car to get up there. It's like 17,000 feet, right? We took a car. Then the car couldn't make it so far. And then we had to take motorbikes. Then the motorbikes went up. We was on the motorbike for about 30 minutes going up until the motorbikes couldn't make it anymore with us. And then we had to take horses. And with the horses, couldn't reach we had to go by foot so my question was how did they build this way up here how did they get all these cannons up here how they got the cannon bombs up here all the heavy metal all the heavy equipment that heavy artillery before how? engines existed <laughs> <laughs> before trucks before wow. backhoes before you know um, payloaders to pull it how oh they say oh you know, he had 20,000 soldiers, they said, work. I don't even think 20,000 soldiers could have do all. Man, those cannons, cannons are so big and mm. so heavy. Mm. You know, I said, it only could have been the high society they was dealing with mm -hmm. to get that up there. You know, and when you go up there, you could feel the ancestors, you could feel the spirit king. I show and that it's like a whole different world when you get up there. Right. You could feel ancestral power, you know? Right. And when we first went in, he has a room where they do their kumina service, their kumina rituals. You know, you could see where, you know, they light the candles and everything. And you could go inside there and, you know, they do their rituals or whatever to, to cover all the cannons, cover all the bombs. But they never got to use the fortress. You see, this was now, this was after they won wow. the, the Asian Revolution. He built this in 9, 1806. You know, okay. they got there between 1803. Exactly. Yeah, but he just did that so if they try to come again, mm -hmm. you see? So insurance. he was prepared. Yeah, he insurance. He was, pay, he was prepared for them. And he was one of the wealthiest minds at that time. He was billions of dollars, and he knew the resources Haiti had at that time. Mm -hmm. So he was rich with gold, rich with oil, because Haiti is on three titanic plates, mm -hmm. right? So now they have a lot of oil, a lot of gold. They have... Mm -hmm. um, an extraterrestrial mineral that landed to Haiti millions of years ago. You only find that in Haiti and South Africa. It's called iridium. Uh -huh. they, yeah, they use this they use this mineral for uh, elect electrical devices, space travel. They took Wakanda. These... They took they took the whole idea. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all um... up, all up, my lord. Even if you watch the new Wakanda Forever. It yeah. just came out. I seen it. Yeah, they they even did a couple clips in Haiti. Mm. Yeah, they did a couple clips in Haiti. The 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 sister who was I guess in love with Kashaka or whatever, she mm. moved to Haiti. So the right, queen that's of, right, that's yeah. right. I forget. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, the Lupita, yeah. Hey, she was in Haiti. True, true. And, yeah. and 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 even at the end, the the sister um was the Black Panther now, right? And she moved to Haiti at the end of the movie. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So you see the connection? Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is the connection. And they're showing you that, you know, um, that, that Haiti would have this mineral, but they didn't want to, like, show it exact because that will be too obvious, right? Of course. Yeah. So now Kristoff now got all these millions of dollars. Now he's the general. All the other European powers come in there to make deals with him, trying to trade with him. He even owned it, some of the islands in the Bahamas and all. Like Inagua, because Inagua is right there, the Haiti. You have um, Lake Juana. So even some of the islands, he was ruler over, over in the Bahamas. And the Bahamians have such a prejudice vibe against Haitians. You know, they always blame Haitians for um, uh, trying to destroy the Bahamian economy and all these things because they keep coming by boats and stuff. They're bringing in drugs and all these things. But, um, it's the behemoths that are paying for these boats to bring them. It's the behemoths who are captains that are bringing them here mm -hmm. to the Bahamas. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And yeah, and it's the European foreigners that are really sucking the place dry because the Haitians, they're just coming here for a better life. They just want to work, mm -hmm. you know? But the, the, the European investors, they come here 
They buy all up the land by the beachfront. They build their homes. They get, do their Airbnb businesses. They do their resorts. And the money goes straight to their town, to the state. They don't keep their money here. They don't, they're not invest. They're not letting the money float here. They're getting the money and sending it home. You see what I'm saying? But the Haitians, they have to live here. So they have to spend the money here to go to the shops. So, you know, they spend with the community. But the European Sam, when you say, just say, for instance, you want to come here and you want to get an Airbnb home here, you book it online. So the money goes straight to their account. Yeah. It's not like you come in here to the Bahamas and you, you, you're spending it here or whatever. It stays on their account. But their bank is in the state. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's, yeah, I don't even, yeah. Yeah, so, all right. So now, you have all these billions of dollars now, right? And after, you know, um, Papa Doc and all these different, you know, um, leaders came in. And even at that time, and it's a queen called Catherine Florence. The first flag that Celine authorized her to do for Haiti was red and black. It wasn't the red, white, and blue. It was red and black, mm-hmm. right? And if you see a picture with His Majesty visiting Haiti at that time, Haiti flag was red and black. Oh. Yeah, when when His Majesty met Papa Doc and everything, and for sure His Majesty already, yeah, and it's for sure His Majesty visit. Um, it was I think it was an interview with Papa Doc was saying. His Majesty visit a Kumana service. Mm-hmm. All right. He went to Sintadel because, you know, His Majesty, even when he went to Jamaica, he went to all the historical spots to pay his respect. Mm-hmm. So for sure, he went to Sintadel, paid his respect to that wonder. And he, and then even if you, if you watch the, the visit to Jamaica, he even had a bingy service going on. If you notice it, when he went to the banquet, and the bingy that was playing the drums in front of him and stuff like that. So His Majesty yeah. wasn't this type of person that um, shone out African tradition. Like, he respected all because he knew all of it linked up to one. It linked up to him, you know? Mm-hmm. He is the fender of the faith. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Sure. So he, 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 any country in Africa he visited, that country, their tradition, their way of worship, he would, you know, visit it. Or yeah. they will bring it to him wherever he was. They'll bring their way of worship to him to show him how they deal with things there, how they reach out to the supreme being there. And his majesty, he respected people's faith, you know? Yeah. So now after, now when the Americans came and now they went to the central bank and France wanted him to pay for reparation for damage and for the war and everything so now all these different European nations want to revenge so now they say okay the only way we can get revenge now from these people is the economic revenge we don't trade with them we don't uh, send anything their way we don't give them no jobs we don't make no investment whatsoever there for them to um, um, batter their self and uplift their self because we know that they are ambitious people and once they get the money Haiti will be on top of the world in the Western Hemisphere. You understand? Because it was the it was on top of the world before, you know? Don't let the first that, yeah, it was it was the first that uh, freed, you know, themselves from, from bondage. And then even Christophe, before he became the general, the king of the north, before he was crowned king, he went to Carolina and fought with uh the Spanish. Mm. He went and fought with the Spanish in Carolina. And after he came back, that's when he got, you know, his, his general um title and, and start to, you know, trade and he had a business here because he came as a slave to Haiti. You see, he came as a slave to Haiti and he was working to this restaurant but he bought later on where uh, he was cooking as a chef and everything and he was watching how the French them was dealing with, you know, military and war and, and strategizing and all that he learned and then that's what he used to, you know, bad itself but almost just like the story of Idiot Mean you know, Idiot Mean was the same way working at a, ban- uh, at a banquet at a restaurant and being a bus boy and stuff yeah. like that, and yeah, and one of the, I think the generals saw his, his structure and they's like, man, we, we need you in the army and stuff like that. And they gave him promotion and he went to Britain, he went to England and learned, you know, the art of military, you know, combat and stuff like that, you know, and then he went back to Uganda and then 
he used that skill to defend his people. Mm-hmm. You know, he'd be like, okay, thank you all for giving me the tools I need. Now I can take, I can, I can use these tools on you. Get out. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So yeah, that's how Christoph was kicking it, you know, and he, and um Patron, Patron, Patron is another mulatto general in Haiti, right? Mm-hmm. Patron, he assisted Simeon, Simeon Bolivar who was the, the founder of Bolivia and, and, and Colombia and Venezuela and all them. That's where they got their flag color from, you know, from Haiti. Only thing was different is the yellow. Yeah. Yeah, Bolivia, Venezuela, and stuff like that. So Haiti even helped free them. Cool. Yeah. And so then it was obviously asked, Haiti had to be defeated because the Europeans were already seeing this is like a, a contagion. It's spreading. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, so... On um, Simeon Boulevard is asking them, all right, he asks, Petron, he asks, Krista, what I owe y'all, like, what I have to pay y'all for y'all to help me get the Spanish out of here, out of my country. He said, you don't have to pay us nothing. We'll give you soldiers, we'll give you troops, just free them. Mm. Just once you tell me they free, that's my pay. You know what I mean? All he wanted to know is to know is that they helped to free the slaves from the plantations from the, the grip of colonialism, and that was their pay. They wasn't looking for no pay because they was rich. They was wealthy. They didn't have all the money. They was the generals at that time. They was the top duns. You know what I mean? Everybody was coming to them to trade. You know, they had, they had uh, crops. They had food. Haiti was feeding the Bahamas. You know what I mean? So <clears throat> it's just sad that uh, the history is not being taught because of hate, mm-hmm. you know? because of hate and because of um, ignorance, mm-hmm. you know? And when I hear them say Haiti's in a condition because of their spiritual practice, it's, it's ignorance. It's, it's, it's very it doesn't make any sense. You say, because um, witchcraft and sorcery is all over the world. Mm-hmm. You know, America, Europe, they have the most witches. True. You know, you know what I mean? Their cult, their cult system is set up off of sorcery, like the the the, the, the Masonic orders that they're in, the skull and bones, and you know, um, yeah, all these different Masonic orders that they're in. They deal with child sacrifice. They deal yes. with on um, you sacrificing your family for riches. Blood sports, you know, yeah, blood sports and stuff like that. All these different the gladiator. That's where they got all these um and basketball, football. All these are rituals, all these are satanic rituals, but they they invest in, they say, okay, we're going to watch, you know, Negroes now play with balls and stuff. And that's another homosexual thing, like the ball, like basketball, throwing it in the hoop, mm-hmm. sexual magic. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? That's what they deal with, you know? Mm-hmm. So all around them is rich crowd, but they just focusing on Haiti because they just put that on Haiti. Like, oh, that's the zombie I don't know if they, the the first movie they brought out about zombies they was they was depicting Haiti. I don't know if you remember that. It's an old movie about zombies and stuff like that. And they were showing you know, the Asians coming out of the woods looking like zombies and all that. You know, um it's a book called The Reign of the Serpent and shows you like, you know, where they got that zombie stuff from, you know what I mean? Um, so um I think Haiti had to pay France, I think five hundred billion dollars or something like that. That's and right. That's they just the, finished yeah. in nineteen forty yeah. something. Yeah, you see. So and then um, America went to their central bank and took all the gold out because they had billions of dollars worth of gold. So this place was like a paradise. Like if if they didn't do that, people would have been going there for jobs. Yeah. Instead of <laughs> instead of going to America <clears throat> for a good opportunity, you know. Mm-hmm. So they would have been going there. So that's why Haiti is in the condition it's in because America and America is still there exploiting the place. They still taking out still the uranium. Crazy. They still taking out the gold, mm-hmm. you know. And every resistant leader that rise up, they kill them and they put puppet president, prime ministers there, puppet presidents, you know, yeah. to um to do everything what they say to do, you know. And if you go against them, they get rid of you, just like this last president. Mm-hmm. He just went missing out the blue, and then they tried to throw it on Cubans. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. And then, because when I was there, I was staying at Santa Mar Hotel, and I saw ambassadors from all over the world—Americans, Canadians. Uh, Where were you? Spanish. 
the Santima Hotel in, in Okap. Okay. This this was a five star hotel where all of you know investors go. Okay. And I I went there too specifically just to see what's going on too. You know, mm -hmm. like because they try to say, oh Haiti is unrest right now, civil unrest is going on right now, which is true in the capital. Yeah. Because they have um the gangs they're fighting against the uh, American troops. They have American troops, Mexican troops, and Canadian troops there right now. The they wouldn't put American it on troops those. are there now. Yeah, American troops are there. They had their They're not covering there. that story at all in the American no. news. I see that for myself. I even did a video with them and they're protesting all over the streets. They're burning down like all the European shops and the stores and restaurants and yeah. And yeah, and they have the, the American have their tanks there, but Russia is assisting Haiti with gas because they're having a problem with gas. So mm -hmm. America stopped sending gas there, right? So now without gas, no production could go on. So you know the place is just in pure chaos. So Russia brought gas, and while well, America can't touch Russia, so what they did is when the Russian fuel tank full up the, the trucks, they'll stop the trucks when the trucks going through to get to these gas stations, they'll um, block the, the trucks or whatever like that. So mm -hmm. that's what they're fighting for now for the gas to fluctuate. A lot of black market people fighting. Yeah, black market, gas. yeah. Because mm -hmm. when I was there, a gallon of gas was 20 bucks US. What? Yeah, yeah, twenty bucks U.S. You know, and, yeah, I telling you. So how you expect the people them to live off of that? You know, a lifestyle like that. They done don't have resources. They don't have the jobs. They don't have the economy to even keep up with that type of lifestyle. Even here in the Bahamas, where the dollar is one with America, they can't keep up with that. So imagine a place like Haiti. You know, so they're 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 at war with Haiti right now. This is the the final war going on right now. They're trying to annihilate us. They're trying to kill us off. And then these soldiers, they go there, they rape the girls. You have a bunch of mulattoes now running around the place. Um, they have human trafficking going on. They just um, caught some tourists coming on the sailboats and they must be carrying like 13, about 30 young girls. they like 13, like 15 to 13 that age and they carry them on these sailboats to carry them to America either for organs or for sex trafficking or for being a slave and you know so a lot of that going on right under our nose right here you don't even have to go to look to Africa yeah but right here under our nose you know yeah right here yeah. all the slavery all of the <laughs> I tell abuse, you my all Lord. of that is happening right here it's it's amazing how the West they like to you know, recycle that trope or over in Africa, y'all this, y'all that, y'all can't. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, and, here, and here we so good and so civilized, and <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah, this this where all the criminal activities going on right now. So, um, so if that's why I wanted to go, you know, I could have gone anywhere else, but I said I need to go there and see what's true because a lot of my family's like, don't go right now, they kidnapping. A lot of civil unrest or whatever like that. You know, I ask God to just show me a sign. There's a reason why everyone just said, forget Haiti. Haiti is a no-go zone. Don't don't remember it no more. Just just move on with your life. Go to the States, go to Europe, visit anywhere else. Just don't go there or whatever. So whenever they say don't go, that's when you go. That's right. And and where you see they say go, you don't go. <laughs> that's right. Oh my lord, you see it. Yeah. Yeah, yes, King. So I say, you know what? Whatever the white man say to do, you do the opposite. Never do what they say do. So they saying don't go to Haiti. I'm gonna go and it was nice, my lord. Yeah, of course, we have people um asking you for money and stuff like that because of the situation, yeah. you know, and you could see a lot of them never saw Bobo Shanty before. So I went and Savior come in, it was like crazy. Everybody starts circling around me, you know, and asking for, you know, a couple of dollars or whatever. But what I noticed was the queens never bagged me, never asked me for nothing. Every queen I saw was working, selling clothes, selling fruit, hustling. Yeah. They, that, that resilience they have is, is, is off the chain. They, they, something else. They, the sisters are strong. Uh -huh. And, 
and a, a lot of the history of the Haitian Revolution with the sisters are being hit too. A lot of the the stories of the sisters who helped in the 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 victory, you know, have been hidden too. You know, like like I told you about Cecile Satima, she was a um a mix. She her mother was Senegalese and her father was French, and she was born in France. And her father sold her and her mother as a slave. So when they reached the Haiti or whatever, you know, she was almost like a house slave, but she was an inter- she was an online run. She was a well organizer. She created codes to communicate with everyone by calling certain areas by a code name, certain people by a code name, so the slave masters would know. Um, that's where they got the mystique character from of X Men. You know, the mystique that could change into different people. Yes. She said she had that she had that capability. She could have changed, could have shape shift. Yes, yeah, so she had the power to shape shift and all these things. And then you had the Toya, there's a Diomi general that was caught as a slave from Benin. And when she reached to Haiti, she escaped and she saw this, this woman pregnant and gave birth to this child, this boy child, and the lady passed away. So she said, take care of my son. So she went back to the plantation. She gave herself in so she could have one-on-one time with this baby so she could train him. Mm-hmm. And she trained him to out of war, out of battle and everything. And this baby became to be the famous Jane Dasseline. Mm-hmm. You see it? And that's where he learned his military strategy from and the art of combat and everything from a Diomi general. That's where you see they got the Woman King movie from. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's the same. That's that's the 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 leader for that 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 woman army, that that Amazon Queens. Mm-hmm. That's her right there, Toya. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was reading about that movie um, about Lupita, the sister. They had asked her to be the lead, and she said she went to Benin and she studied the story, <laughs> and she refused to do it because she realized that Hollywood done twist the story up, and the lead character oh, uh, she said had never existed, and two that they had um, enslaved, you know, caught us for enslavers, you know. So yes, yes, yes. you know, um, <clears throat> it's a reality that we have to come to grips with too. That um, we did betray ourselves, you mm-hmm. know, but we it was a it was a lot of resistance too. You know, a mm-hmm. lot of us went to war and fought against them. Not mm-hmm. not all of our leaders sold us out. A lot of our leaders fought for us. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But um. Yes, we were sold to them from our own, for molasses, for rum. That's Ooh. why, yeah, that's why Ja out rum, you know, because rum is what got us down here too. You that's know? right, rum. Yeah, that's true. Uh, I mean, and it's funny because, check it, it's like they had plenty of white slaves all throughout history, but you never hear white people, or we never like, you never hear us going like, we all sold you ourselves too. I mean, yeah. Let's just say it's a common thing. Slavery yeah, 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 in yeah, many yeah, different yeah, yeah. forms existed all yeah, around the yeah, world. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know? And that's another thing they'll say to minimize it as if to mm-hmm. say that their concept of chattel slavery was anything akin to the bondage and indentured servitude that we experience mm-hmm. in Africa mm-hmm. among Africans. Mm-hmm. You know, and I, I don't believe that when African kings, even when the people sold us and betrayed us that they had a full understanding of the european concept of slavery because their concept was so different yeah they really didn't fully understand the plan what they mm-hmm. really had set up for mm-hmm. us you know what i mean they may be i mean they knew that to some extent we was going to be servants for them but yeah. they didn't know they was gonna create a whole world off of that like come in the western hemisphere and create America and all these different nations, you know what I mean? Because now Europe was in a dark age, right? Europe was, they were starving. They was fighting amongst each other, killing one another, everything, no food, the cold. So they say, you know what? Africa is sunny. Africa is full with everything we need to sustain ourselves and be a powerful nation. So let's go there. So, um, when we're looking at that, like right now, you have Africans in Europe, 
going across the sea, drowning and everything to go to cross the Medi- to Mediterranean Sea to get into Europe. Mm. And then you have them here, like far to Haiti and stuff, going to America for a better life. Mm. Where before they was doing the opposite, mm-hmm. coming to us for a better life. True. You know what I mean? And now we gave them that better life and they didn't give us back that same gratitude in return. You know, they they What's didn't that? say, all right, you know what? Mm. We, they, we got their minerals, we got all their natural resources. Now we can make cars, we can make jets, we can, um, you know, we could do all these different electron devices or whatever. Now let's make sure they straight. Mm-hmm. You know, they wasn't thinking that way, you know? Mm. And that's why the the president of Rwanda saying enough is enough. I'm rich as some wealth that they have. Yeah. He's going to use that and teach teach his people how to utilize them and create them. So, you know, like in college, like when we go to school, they we go to school to be a lawyer or a doctor or we go to school to be a mechanic. Like the stuff they create, we go to school to fix them, to mm-hmm. learn how to fix. Mm-hmm. We don't go to school to learn how to make cars. Mm-hmm. how to make the helicopters how to make the planes you know mm-hmm. what i mean see mm-hmm. that that not that information they ain't giving that to us mm-hmm. they want us to continue to be worker class people job seekers yeah jo- job seekers you see so because mm-hmm. all right you go to college i mean college is good it's good to go to get accumulate knowledge accumulate different trade and stuff like that that's good because africa need it but the way they set it up, they set it up where you still have to come to them for a job mm-hmm. when you go to college. They set it up that way. If you go to be a doctor, you got to wait till a certain hospital call you after you done graduate. Mm-hmm. You know, you, mm-hmm. you give in a certain hospital your resume and hoping that they will call you, which one will call you. <laughs> you know, like, please, please. You know, got to pay back me. these loans. Help me. <laughs> <laughs> you know? You don't pay hundreds, hundreds of thousands of dollars according to what type of um, field of doctorate you went to do. Surgery, some go for heart surgeon, brain surgeon, you know, so according to what field, it costs more. You know, even a lawyer, you know, you have um, uh, real estate lawyers, you have criminal, criminal justice lawyers, you know, different fields. So according to you go for, it costs more and you still have to wait for them to give you a job. Um, you know, like the Jewish yeshiva school, they teach their children how to do that. And this school is like, say, for instance, <clears throat> when they go to the primary school level in their yeshiva school, they teaching them high school level work in primary school. Mm-hmm. And, primary, and in high school, they teaching them college level work. Mm-hmm. And when they go to college, they teach them a whole different field of work. They teach them how to be scientists, how to invent, how to, you know, um, Splice, splice genetics and all these different stuff. Mm-hmm. You know how how to make um advanced um um spaceships to go up in space and all of it is from us too. Because if you go in history, you'll see that as a lady called um Christine, I think yeah, Christine Darren. She created the sonic boom. She's mm-hmm. the one that created the jets, like how the jets could you know do that sonic boom where they could travel fast. Mm-hmm. It was a black queen that invented that, you know. It's a uh, it's a black man by Ghana. I think his name is Mister Ghana. He created the stoplight, the red, gold, and green. Oh yeah, stoplight. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he created the face mask. Yeah, he also you know, created the, gas the, mask. Uh, the lubricator cup for the trains. Yeah, trains yeah, Lu- yeah. Lu- Lewis Lattimore created the light bulb. Created light. Yes. You see what I'm saying? So. We we was the first inventors for real. We we used we could have used our natural resources and create these things, but they took the great ones of us and they took the blueprint. They made us made it, and then they pay us a couple dollars. It wasn't much at that time, and they say, "Hey, I'll take this little hundred dollars for inventing this." Now I'm gonna put my name on this brand. Yes. You know what I mean? And then I'm going to say that I's the one that created it. Mm-hmm. I pay you for your name to be out. No. You know? Do so the same thing it, in music, too. True, true. Yes, true, true. Because, like, with, with jazz and stuff, they know that it came from us. That's why you see, like, a lot of them, they, like, listen to jazz and stuff like that. Because it's, it's, it's connected to that, that frequency. Because, you know, when you hear jazz, it carries that 
food and frequency, mm-hmm. you know, like that calm, collective vibe, you know what I mean? And that's where they got that from too. And then they they change from jazz and then they start um, paying them to create these rap and, and, and singing of us, you know, wanting money and our sister Sam halfway naked and you know what I mean? So mm-hmm. they, they give us that and now they take the jazz. Mm-hmm. You see know what I said? Before it was us who created, they take that and they give us rap. They give us dance all, they give us all these different... And if you look you know, at it, you know, like, historically, they just are taking our crafts, commodifying them, then corrupting them, pimping them out. Yes, Like, yes, raping yes, them to the yes, nth degree, yes, you know, like, yes, it's this yes, land that yes, they just always yes, extract yes, the wealth yes, from, and then yes, they just cast yes, it aside. Yes, yes, and yes, yes, always, yes. that keeps us on our toes, because we always, like, we always creative and we never we always want to be fresh as a people true true you know, so true. once they adopt it and we see them you know polluting our thing we're like nah let's do something new now yeah you know, so we always progress and that's what i love you know because it's yeah. like if you look at the jazz now even jazz itself comes out of a tradition that is profane like my grandmother's generation you couldn't say the word jazz you couldn't say the word funk. Those are bad words. Wow. You know, you get slapped in the mouth to say jazz or funk. Wow. Because jazz related to, to semen, to bodily fluid, jizz. Oh. And jazz was okay. like a diss for black creative music or like mm. anything that was not European. Like, what you yeah, playing that yeah, jazz? Yeah, you could yeah, have that jazz, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah so it's interesting. But now when you say jazz, now white mainstream elite society has adopted it and you can go to like jazz at Lincoln Center in New York City and wear tux and be yeah. high class. All right, Dan. Yeah. You know? Only high class really listen to it, right? Yeah. yeah. So it's uh, it's it's yeah. interesting because it used to be like only the lowest class you could when you were listening to jazz in 1917, it was Jelly Roll Morton in Louisiana in the yeah, that's that African brothels, music. you know. <laughs> Yeah, that's that Negro music. That's you know how they talk. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's it's you know it's it's a music of you know it's a music of sin in a lot of ways. You know, so yeah. it's interesting how they take it, and I I expect them to do the same thing in due time with you know the rap we hear today, all the ratchetness. Yeah, at some yeah, point yeah. Because yeah, already yeah, you yeah, see, yeah, I yeah. see it online. There's like white folks who got a lot of money know all of this rap music that's out there that the, the kids listen to in the hood yeah, and do the dances yeah, yeah. and it's interesting to me like what is your motivation you're not part of this culture you're you're a yeah. spectator but you know yeah, this stuff yeah, good yeah, you know yeah yeah so but you know they, they're the ones that produce it they the ones that got to sign the label for these music to even come out this is true the calling calling the sisters the b word True. And, and, and talking about they have so much money they could, you know, use as toilet tissue, all these nonsense and True. stuff like that. They want us to uh, be pushing out consumerism, like consume, consume, which spend money on flashy, on, 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 on prostitution. You know what I mean? They want to push that. Like, I, I was looking at Netflix, so it's like, maybe I was looking at Netflix, it's like, this, this side is very, that wind is cutting in there, Bobo. That wind. Maybe if you turn your the orientation, that wind is, yeah. You can hear me now? That's better, yeah, man. Yes, yes. Yeah, man. So I was telling her, I was saying how Netflix is very demonic because if you notice, they're pushing out homosexual, homosexuality a lot in Netflix. You know, every, se- every series or movie you go to, it's some type of homosexuality and then it just kill my say, oh man, like they can't do no movie without this because I know they want to please the LBG and the lesbian community and gay community or the whatever. Academy, yeah. They, yeah, the academy or whatever. So they want them to feel like they're part of, you know, they don't want to be left out just showing them a man and a woman only on these movies and series. So they try to fit them and I can tell you how much power the, what do you call it, the LGBT or whatever like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can tell how much power they have, and then they show a lot of slavery movies too. Oh, that's what I we like, get. That's, I, I that's what we get for our history. Lord, I see. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> I say that's what we get. That's what we paying for for these people to be spitting in our face all the time. They got one coming out now with with Emmett uh, Emmett Till. Yeah. Yeah. I say, why would they do a movie off of that? That's disrespectful. The only Victoria you know? stories they give us is fictional. It's totally like no, like Wakanda, where they step steal our story, Black Panther, true, true, and give true, it back true, to us. But true, it's nothing true, true, that it's true. really actionable that is really going to make us, the way, the way I see it, people may argue with me, but I don't see anything that is going to enrich any Black people other than the individuals that yeah, are involved. All right, then, That's great. Yeah, but yeah, as far yeah. as, as a whole, I don't really mm-hmm. see it. You know, it's like a feel-good thing, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, they... Everything they bring out is of our suffering. They never bring out, like, they have a lot of movies with mad evil stuff where you can see their glory and you can see all the, you know, all the magnificent battles they won, they won for the Queen of England and for the Queen of Scotland and all these things. But they never show our battles where we fought, you know, different empires, you know, from yeah. ancient times, the Golden Age, you know, mm. um, and... and and Kemet, how we defeated all the Huck, the Huxos and the Syrians and the Persians and you know Nimrod, not Nimrod, um, because now Hannibal, you know, Tahaka, <laughs> all these great kings, all these because we have a long we have a much longer history of battles than any other dynasties. Uh. Especially, especially um um Ethiopian throne. Mm-hmm. You know, that throne fought a lot of battles. That's why it, it, it chose the symbol of a lion because the lion is the conqueror. They did a lot of conquering. They went straight up to Asia, straight down here to the Western Hemisphere. We was conquering. We was warring. We was, you know, mm-hmm. being in power. There's so much history that they could they could show of us. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's but for they us to do. Because, I mean, anytime that they're going to show it, they're going to, you know, they're going to twist it. They're going to pollute it, you know? So Ooh. that's Ooh. the thing. They never going to stop, <laughs> you know? <laughs> that's a lot. You're right, man. You know, so I, I say we have to make our own. And then you have producers that could do it, but they're still being controlled by the elite. So, you know, like people like Tyler Perry them and all these different oh, tools, you know? Yeah, they're tools, you know? They say they they're, they're, they they produce their own movies, but Mm-hmm. Everything is just to benefit them. The, the white society pleasing them and, and entertaining them, nothing to enrich us. Yeah, I think once we really need people who have all those those skills who are not attached to the money and the material culture, who really are just there to do the work. Yeah. You know? But it's like once yeah. a man can get all that millions and get all that adulation, it's really hard yeah. to convince him not to just be out there for himself and his family and yeah, friends. True, 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 true. You know? Um, I don't know if you ever saw the interview with his majesty. They was asking, well, before they asked him that, the emperor went to a, a show and they set up a show for him and he was sitting down and the children, um, you know, was depicted as Mussolini and, and fighting against Ethiopia and stuff like that. Mm. When his majesty saw that, he got up and walked away. You know, that speaks so many volumes. Because as soon as he reached in, you know, they bring a show out, a skit with the children, Mussolini and fight in Ethiopia and this and that. So when the emperor got up and walked away, everybody's looking like, what? So when they asked, the emperor said, you know, they could never do a movie or a skit of the suffering of my people went through in the Italian war. That was like a slap in his face mm-hmm. to do that, you know? Mm-hmm. To how much how much Ethiopian died, mustard gas and stuff like yeah, that. That almost like a, that was like a horror movie when he saw yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? You can imagine the psyche, you know, what he went through, just seeing that, like what he had to go to and bath, like he had to get at, go into exile. Just his journey alone when he thought about like, you know what, how much hell you All the family and friends like, was killed, murdered, beheaded, my lord. You know what I mean? So that so that that gave you a clear understanding right there that as Marty saying they could never tell our story. Like they could never make a movie of hmm. what we've been going through. You know what I mean? They'll never give us the justice. And then they asked him in an interview if they could do a movie about him or whatever. He said no. 
You know what I mean? Because he's not a, a fake character. He's real. Mm-hmm. How you could do a movie about somebody <laughs> who, who live, you know, mm-hmm. you don't see Hollywood as a place of manipulation and the illusion, you know? Deception, yeah. Deception. So he's like, no, because he doesn't know they was going to whitewash that. They was going to paint that up good and not give the full truth, you know? Yeah, he said no, you know what I mean? And, and I understand why he said no, because they wasn't going to really give the fullness. It's only us mm-hmm. now will have to do that, mm-hmm. you know? And then that producer who doing it, he'll even have to have, like, a, a Rastafari even assisting him to, to do a movie with the emperor because we know the emperor not only on a, a, a political, governmental level, but a spiritual level. That's the most important part. Mm-hmm. To put the spiritual understanding of him in the movie, mm-hmm. you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. But you have some they could do a movie of his political life, you know what I mean, and really went through like um, bringing Ethiopia to the modern age, mm-hmm. you know, bringing in light, bringing in re- um, vehicles, bringing in schools, and you know, you know, and all these different things like navy and air airports and all that. You know, they could they could they could bring something like that out, but when it comes to the spiritual aspect of him, that's where we come in. You know, but he can interpret that better than us. Mm-hmm. You know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. Yeah, well, um, you know, it's uh a great thing to reason with the eye this Thanks. this day, you know, and um we really need to do this more often. I feel truly, that we will. Truly. Yes. Truly. Um, yes, my lord. And I'm, I'm still, you know, as I progress on these these researches, I'm sure I'll have more more uh, questions. And, you know, so we'll we'll keep the link, my lord. Yes, my lord, for sure. You know, I glorify. You know, to have I on that platform. Yes, you know, um, so the world can hear the black truth. You know. Mm-hmm. And we need this more because a lot of people are looking for truth. They're looking for answers. And uh, the public schools are not giving it to them. The universities are not giving it to them. You know, um, self-taught, you know. You have to be self-taught and you have to do your research on your own. You know, that's why I give thanks for, you know, our scholars that went out there and did the research, pay, spend their money traveling to these different locations and do their research because you know it takes dedication you know mm. it takes love to because a lot of people don't want to read you know they, they're not going to take their time go read you know 100 200 books to try to find um the knowledge for the world really need you know yeah so, for themselves. so you have to respect those that are doing the work that are going out there and finding the information to share yes. with the world you know so true. I give thanks for that you using this, you know, platform, using this bridge mm. as a, a bridge of information to get to the people, you know. My Lord. Yes, um, my Lord. Give thanks for such mighty observations, such mighty word sound. And yes, um, my Lord. Yeah, we going we gonna continue like that. So Yes, my Lord. Until such time majesty, yes, bless my time Lord. Time Until you meet. Give thanks. Bless, bless it. it. My yes, Lord. my Lord. Bless it.